was business, and thank I you. guess pretty good because the earnings were good. Yes, thank you very much, Tyler. Uh, yeah, we we had earnings yesterday, and we're very pleased with with uh, the quarter. We have a very strong marketplace business. We're the largest marketplace in the U.S. that helps consumers shop, finance, buy, and sell cars. Uh, and it's a it's a business that drives value to both consumers and dealers, uh, and that had a very strong quarter. We're also innovating a lot in digital retail, which is a key theme in the in the sector. And happy to talk more about that. If I'm if I'm understanding some of the history of, of your company, it it appears to me that your revenue is highly variable up and down. Can you walk me through that and and correct me if I'm incorrect about it? Sure. Uh, we think of our business in uh, a couple different pieces. One piece is our core marketplace business, which is a subscription business with dealers, and it allows us to connect high intent consumers with dealers who have cars that they want to purchase. Uh, that's a uh, a highly predictable, steadily growing business. That's also nicely profitable. Uh, a couple of years ago, we acquired a business called Car Offer that is a digital wholesale business. And that's a transaction revenue model. And so that's going to be more variable than a subscription model. And on top of being a transaction model, the wholesale sector in particular has been highly dynamic in the last couple of years as inventory has uh, ebbed and flowed with supply chain issues. And so that's what's driving a lot of the revenue volatility that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Would you, Jason, ever move to a, a consumer delivery model like Carvana, which um, looked great a couple of years ago and now has um, now is struggling? So uh, a big push for us is what I referenced, digital retail. And the first step of digital retail, retail being when a dealer sells a car to a consumer, uh, a, a big piece of that is moving more of the transaction online but maybe not the entire transaction online. So today, only about 1% or 2% of consumers want to do the entire car purchase online and have it delivered. Uh, in fact, about 70% of consumers want to do more of the transaction online, but then go into the dealership. Hmm. So we have products today that allow a consumer to shop on our site. They can get a trade-in valuation. They can buy other finance products from the dealer. They can put down a deposit. Uh, they can set up an appointment and then go into the dealership and spend an hour completing the purchase rather than four or five hours. That's been a huge success among consumers and dealers. We're also innovating on ways to help dealers deliver cars to consumers, because while it's only 2% today who want it delivered, we certainly think that's going to continue to grow. What is the mix, Jason, right now between new and used cars that you're selling, and how does that compare with pre-pandemic? So on our site, we have uh, the largest inventory of any marketplace. So that includes both used and new. Uh, we have, uh, there are about twice as many used car sales in a given year than new. Uh, on our site, we add a lot of value to the consumer when they're shopping for a used car because there's so many more unknowns, how that car should be priced, what condition it's in because it's a used piece of inventory. So about 90% of the leads that we deliver to dealers are from consumers who are looking for a used car. Hmm. Uh, but if you're shopping across new or used, and a lot of consumers are because they're, they're not sure if they want to buy new or used, right. uh, you can come to our marketplace and see both. I want to bring in Phil LeBeau for a question, but before I do that, do you, let me ask this to you very quickly. Do you put uh, used car sellers together with used car buyers one-to-one? -one? In other words, uh, facilitate that transaction. We do. So we offer, as I said, uh, a, a value proposition to consumers that is shop, finance, buy and sell. So on the buy and sell piece, uh, a consumer could buy a car from a dealer. That's what we call a retail transaction. Mm -hmm. They could also buy a car from another consumer. So that's a peer to peer platform that we offer. And uh, it's a great way to find cars that are very well priced. They just don't have the benefit of having a, a dealer involved, and there's more um, elements that the two consumers need to figure out themselves. Yeah. We also have the opportunity for consumers to sell cars. So you can come to our site today and enter your license plate or your VIN, answer a few questions on your car, and right. we'll give you a real-time cash offer on your car. Come, pick it up from your house, and wire you the money that day. All right. Phil LeBeau, you have a question. Jason, I'm curious, as we've seen auto loan interest rates rise over the last year, uh, how much has that slowed down demand, in your opinion? Or do you look at this and say people simply trade down? 
they were going to buy an X percent or X priced vehicle. Yeah, the interest rate makes them move down a little bit. Great question, Phil. I think it's done both. So we see uh, that car volumes, used car volumes are in fact down from where they were a year ago. Now, 2021 was a very uh, active year in, in used sales, but they're down year over year. We're also seeing a shift on our site of consumers uh, searching for and shopping for lower price cars. $30,000 seems to be a, a, a trigger point where consumers seem to be more interested in cars under 30,000 than over 30 than they were before. And when you look at interest rates and you think about the, the monthly payment on a $30,000 car with rates where they are, uh, it, it's getting to be numbers that are, are just too significant for a lot of people.